It is exactly 35 minutes past the hour. Welcome back to Jeff Kunangi live here at Citizen Television on the bench today. He has literally hit the ground running last couple of days as the new chancellor of the University of Nairobi, Professor Patrick Verhoeven. Looks more like a figure straight out of Star Trek. Do I? You do. I've been looking at you and saying, where have I seen this face before? <laughs> but there is similarity in the role of Chancellor and yeah. Star Trek. Why yeah. the University of Nairobi wants to go to different places? Uh -huh. Why is it, Jeff, that in every single rating of universities here on the continent, number one, two, three, four, five best universities are in South Africa? Mm. Why is the University of Nairobi, with all the talent, with all the assets, with all the connections, with all the networks, not the number one? of the continent and that's where the star trek comparison comes in we're now at a in a vision at a, at a transmission we're going to different places we want to become and we will become the number one university on the continent and that's why you need a chancellor yeah. who is connected to and from the global north because a lot of the funding which is required for that step change has to come from somewhere else and that somewhere else is some of the world which i represent tell me something um you have a day job. Yes. You work for the Global Center for Adaptation, yes. right? That's your regular job. Indeed. And then you were hired, you were uh, picked by the president. Why you? Well, let's be more precise, Sergio. I have a paid uh, day job and I have an unpaid chancellor's uh, job. Why am I picked by the Senate of the university and confirmed by the president as the chancellor? is because of not of what I say, not of my Star Trek vision, or because of my results. In the last two years, I have been extremely active in mobilizing financial resources from the global north to Africa on climate adaptation. And why is that important? Because Africa is the continent which is suffering most from the climate emergency, particularly in Kenya, but did the least to contribute. So there's a profound moral injustice in the system and in the last two years nine billion dollars has been mobilized has been transmitted to the continent so in the conversations i had in the last two years obviously i've been to makwani to mukuru to any other place and you see the suffering on the ground mm. but at the same time jeff what i also noticed was the the res if you go to makwani and you've been there mm -hmm. you see the resilience of the people you see the sort of creativity of the people and that is exactly what is needed also in this transformation of this country to the next level whether it's in climate change or whether it's in education so why me why was i appointed as chancellor de facto is very simple my value added, if any, Jeff, is being the transmission line between the great assets of the, of the university, the best university in the country, the faculty, the staff, the technology, the innovation, and the world of finance. Bring the University of Nairobi to the world, and at the same time, bring the world to the University of Nairobi. So it's in a very exciting, humbling assignment, and I'm extremely determined to make this happen. And we must, find, we must point out at this time, Prof, that um, you just didn't arrive in Nairobi a couple of weeks or a couple of months ago. You've been no. coming back since 2010, haven't you? Correct. So in 2010, when I worked at the World Bank, and I know there are all sorts of ideas about the World Bank uh, in this and other countries, but let me tell you this. In 2010, I had a project in Kusumu, and my project was about climate smart agriculture. I met these 60,000 smallholder farmers and obviously their productivity was low. But what they said, say, hey, Patrick, we want to transform our agricultural practices, have more produce coming from our land. But at the same time, we also want to suck the carbon into our soil and be paid for that. So I designed that project with the people in Kisumu, which was very successful. And what was really was telling Jeff at that time, I worked with and for Kofi Annan. Mm -hmm. And Kofi Annan learned me something very um, strong and explicitly. He said, it's great to work with 60,000 smallholder farmers in Kusumu. But in Kenya, there are millions of farmers. In Africa, there are tens and hundreds of millions of farmers. What does it take to take one project, which is good, 
to scale. And that's precisely also where higher education comes in, because it's only through higher education that a daughter of a peasant can become a, do a, a doctor, that a son of a mine worker can <coughs> run a mine, that a child of a smallholder farmer, Jeff, can become the president of a great nation. Mm. So higher education is vital. The University of Nairobi is in a great place but it wants to become the globally competitive university which transforms society. So that's a big mission. It has a vision, it has an action plan. Now, go back to Star Trek, we're about to take off. But tell me something, Prof. Yeah. Um, it's, university of Nairobi has been, has been cash strapped for years. Yes. And a lot of the programs, a lot of people complain, are outdated. When you walked in, yeah. did you feel a little overwhelmed? Is, it, is this a tough task? So, I'm not naive, one. Two, I'm very practical. Three, I'm extremely inspired. In the last few days, on my day job now here, I met 10 faculties. And what was the common denominator meeting uh, arts and sciences, uh, built environment, engineering, science technology, health sciences, economics? There is a great asset, the university, it's people. Many of the faculty of the University of Nairobi are top class. Many of the students who are coming in into the University of Nairobi are extremely motivated and are top class. Is it true that the University of Nairobi is cash uh, constrained? Yes, and it's not unique. So what I said in the last few days, it's not smart, Jeff, to think that in a world where government in Kenya and in many parts of the world is still suffering to come out of the COVID recovery, mm. is still suffering from the climate crisis, is still suffering from the Ukraine fallout and the cost of living crisis and the death crisis, that we as universities should think that overnight the government will double, triple, quadruple its budget to the university. And they should not. There are other resources in the world which you have to tap into. Because as the University of Nairobi, we, I'm not saying today, I'm saying we have a lot to offer. And I would think, since I was appointed by the president, and you mentioned that, on January 12th, I have received lots of emails, WhatsApps, direct messages, letters of partners in the global north who said, hey, Patrick, Chancellor of the University of Nairobi, it has a big brand. They say, we're ready to partner. Come forward with your big, bold ideas. Put them on the table as a strong partner. So it's a very exciting uh, journey. All faculty, all staff, all the whole constituency around us is very sort of uh, inspired, not just by me, but by this journey, what we can achieve. There is no way there is no way this country can grow, can step change without the higher education system being effective and productive. Mm -hmm. There is no way. This interesting thing, Jeff, you know this. <coughs> you discussed it on your show. Did you know every month in Africa, one million young people come into the labor force? Yep. One million people. Yep. Out of that one million people every month, only one in four has a paid job. Where do all these people go? So it's the purpose, it's the responsibility of the university to train the people, not for the jobs of today alone, but also of the, days, the jobs for tomorrow. And that's the sort of the assignment which the university has given themselves. They have a clear vision how to do that. And yes, they see me I told all faculties in the last few days, I'm Dutch, and you come across as Dutch as well, and meaning <laughs> direct. Yeah. And I said, exploit me. Exploit me as a chancellor, but be very precise. Mm. Don't come with small things and to try have a scholarship here and a stipendium there. What are the big ticket items which you as faculty want to move forward and then from that sort of idea, let's bring partners in the world to it, as opposed to just shooting around quite randomly. So, and I think maybe I'm an active scholar. 
I'm a CEO in my day job, but my absolute determination as chancellor, I want to transform myself from an active scholar to an active fist chancellor. Hmm. And together you and I make double Dutch. Indeed. How's that? If you pay 50% of your part. <laughs> there you go. Prof, this is great, a conversation. I'm really enjoying this. And uh, I want to come back and talk about it more. Your vision for UON, the fact that UON, like you said, is second tier. You always hear about UCT, University of Cape Town. You hear about Stellenbosch University, even Makerere. Where did we go wrong? What, what can no, I know. Where are we going? We're not second tier, we're going to become number one. Not five years from now, not ten years from now, in the next few years, this will happen. It's very exciting and I count you in also as a, as a proponent of that vision. I'm in. Indeed. I'm in like Flynn. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Professor Patrick Verhoyen, listen to that folks. So much passion for a country he doesn't even, well, he lives in, but you know, he doesn't come from. Next time you're feeling bad about yourself, folks, look at the passion that these folks are bringing in. How about that for this country? We're going to come back with the prof in a little short while. We have a bit of business news.